brothers and sisters this is Keith Thompson uh, this morning I saw this news article and I had to make a video about it uh, this bill right here is the bill to end all bills when it comes to persecution in America for Christians uh, if this bill passes and it will pass it will eventually pass even if um, right now it is opposed uh, this bill is going to be the the one that uh, spearheads the movement into destroying Christianity and taking it down in this country a uh, California bill threatens religious freedom of those who oppose homosexuality. Uh, now, California is just starting ground, but it will eventually domino effect into the rest of this country. Uh, let's see, just to read a little bit. A bill quickly moving through the California state legislator, legislature may threaten the religious freedom of those who object to homosexuality. Jim Daly, the president of Christian Ministry Focus on the Family, wrote a blog alerting Christians to the implications of this bill, which is known as Assembly Bill 2943. Uh, just to quickly look at this bill. Uh, okay. So it was introduced the 16th of February this year. Um, I'll come back to this. But uh, let's see. The bill amends California's Consumer Legal Remedies Act to include sexual orientation change efforts okay now this bill it's interesting that now I, I just a couple days ago I um, I spoke about a bill that was passed in China that took away the uh, distrib distribution of Bibles on online services so you can see how the, the the wave is hitting hitting us it's it's, it's spreading it's just spreading like wildfire uh, daily breaks down the implications of this bill and how it could adversely affect Christians for example, a simple monetary transaction, buying a book, okay, a book is going to also include the Bible, uh, about overcoming homosexuality or paying a counselor for help with gender confusion would trigger AB 2943. So check this out. You could be arrested or fined for purchasing a book. See, but, but see, but, but, but check this out. Look at how this is going to trigger so many different things. Okay, now buying a book, okay, could become um, illegal. So what's going to happen? Bookstores are going to start taking down these books. Why? Because they don't want to be sued. They don't want to be implicated in any type of uh, thing that has to do with uh, going against some law because that would hurt business sales. So they're going to start taking books out of stores like Books and Noble. Uh, um, uh, what's that bookstore? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But they're going to they're going to have to take away these books in order to protect themselves because it's it's a business um so they're gonna start taking out bibles any type of self-help books that that have to deal with confusion with homosexuality and gender uh, confusion that stuff's just gonna be taken out of the book the stores completely so uh it's gonna trickle down thus those who believe homosexuality is a sin could face legal repercussions from monetary transactions having to do with this belief yeah yeah okay to simply put, writes Daily, Christian schools, churches, and others who hold to a traditional understanding of marriage and sexual sexuality would be open to loss. Do you, know, you see how sick that is? Christian schools, churches, and others who hold to a traditional understanding of marriage and sexuality. Traditional. Okay. Traditional. Lawsuits. This is insane. And you know what's interesting? If this bill passes, if and will it does pass, um, the church that's going to be targeted, uh, which is the largest church in California that has that's biblical. There are a lot of churches, but the biggest biblical church in California is John MacArthur's Grace Community Church. And it's going to be interesting to see how this affects that body over there, because uh, they're going to be the first to get hit. And John has spoken about this on uh, many occasions. Uh so Daly encouraged his readers to be aware of this issue, to fight for religious freedom, to take action by visiting. So I think we need to pray, pray, pray that this bill is pushed as far as it can go before it's passed. Because as we know, it will get passed. It's, let's just let's be honest. It's going to be passed. Um, this is this is real, man. This is real. It's getting real here in America. Uh they're going to force the church to be revealed the true church to be revealed the true church is already small but what's going to happen is because of bills like this it's going to make it harder for those who are false to fake it 
to fake it. It's going to make it harder because think about this. Okay, when this bill happens and let's say a decade from now, it's trickled down and it's run across the country and every state now holds to this bill. That's going to affect the local church. Okay, and eventually it's going to break it down. It's going to shut its doors. Okay, that's what it's eventually going to happen. So look at how we're going to become like the churches that are in northern China, North Korea that are having to be held underground. See, they're doing what we're going to be doing. It's not an anomaly what's going on in, in those countries. That's what America is going to look like for the true church. We're going to be pushed underground. We're going to be arrested. We're going to be killed. And this is going to happen a lot sooner than I thought originally it would happen. Um, you know, I, it, it, I mean, it's moving at such a rapid pace that, listen, <laughs> if you're a true Christian, get ready. Get ready to have everything taken from you. Get ready. I mean, the day will come soon. Well, I won't be able to upload Christian videos to YouTube. My channel will be deleted. That, that That's coming. Okay. Uh, the day will come when if you desire to preach and minister on the streets, that, that, that's not going to happen. You'll be arrested. You'll be thrown in prison. This is serious. This is serious. And, uh, you know, but let's just pray. Let's just pray that this bill is uh, pushed out as far as it can before it's accepted, before it's passed. Oh, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. But, yeah, thank you for listening. God bless. I'm going to read that again. Oxford English Dictionary made post-truth their word of the year. Do either one of you wish to sober us as to what that means? Um, I think we're being pushed into a cultural ult ultimatum between love and truth. You can only choose one or the other. Either you're on the side of truth or you're on the side of love. And in our society of microaggressions and trigger words and safe spaces and speakers being no platformed if they have anything controversial that they might bring to a university, truth is seen as dangerous. And there's this assumption that truth of its nature is offensive and that disagreement with someone will lead you on a trajectory to the devaluing of them and then to the intolerance of them and then to extremism and then to violence and then to terrorism. And so if you're committed to truth, you're actually a terrorist in the making. And faced with that ultimatum, I think most of Western society is fleeing from the truth to this post-truth culture. Now, I think there's a real irony here because a post-truth culture is inevitably also a post-love culture because there's nothing more unloving than refusing to share the truth with another person. If you have a truth that can greatly benefit someone, it is an act against love not to share it with them. Even if you have a difficult truth, I have a friend whose father has been unfaithful. He's just found out for many years and he refused to share that truth with the family. And now that family is living with the consequences of his trying to live in a post-truth way. Now, here's the amazing thing about Christianity. It refuses to make a choice between love and truth because God is truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And God is love. Therefore, truth is love. And what our calling is, is to absolutely refuse to separate the two. And that's what the gospel is. Boom. Yeah. was postmodern, right? Now we've moved to post-truth. Where does post-truth take us? What are the consequences of a post-truth word and all that that represents? What's the consequences in society? You know, uh, the term has two meanings. When, if you were to ask an Oxonian, they'll probably tell you this in defense of what they're trying to do. The hard meaning they want to have is really that there are no absolutes. There's no such thing as truth. But the soft meaning is what they really are going with, that you cannot ultimately know the truth. They're just, they're just facts. They're not necessarily uh, self-revealing truths. And it came in the context of the political process. And the interesting thing about The Economist article on post-truth is that 
90% of the illustrations given about how truth doesn't matter is about the present president-elect. Just one single statement about the other candidate that was also running, which told me that the journalist was playing the same game. They were not really telling the truth. They weren't equally distributing the weight of responsibility for every candidate to tell the truth. They were just tendentious, using it in one direction. But the whole idea is of that whatever you feel you need to say, truth is governed by emotions, not by reality and facts. That's the softer and real meaning. When you think of what Winston Churchill said, that truth is the most valuable thing in the world, so valuable that it is often protected by a bodyguard of lies. And Natan Sharansky, the former justice minister of Israel, uh, held as a political prisoner in Russia, when he went to Russia, went to lay a wreath at Andrei Sakharov's grave. Sakharov is the one who gave to the Soviets the atomic bomb. And Sharansky, after he laid the wreath, following his few minutes in the prison where they had kept him in solitary confinement, and he told his wife, this is where I really found myself. He goes and lays the wreath, comes out, and a battery of microphones waiting for him. Here's what he said. Before, uh, before Sakharov died, he made this comment. I always thought that the most powerful weapon in the world was the bomb. He said, I've changed my mind. The most powerful weapon in the world is the truth. So if truth is the most powerful weapon and the most valuable thing, and we are living in this society without the most powerful weapon and without the most valuable thing, we go to alternative weapons and to a, uh, to a terrain of lies. We are lied to by the media. As what uh, Muggeridge said, the lie stuck like a fishbone in the throat of the microphone. And it used to be that the Soviets were charged with that. Pravda means truth, Izvestia means news. And they used to say there's no Pravda in Izvestia, no Izvestia in Pravda. There's no truth in the news and no news in the truth. We're now living with that kind of a, the tendentious use of knowledge by the media today leading us into where they want us to go by fabricating stories. They can destroy people. And so a generation that doesn't believe in the truth why they're going to believe in the absolute revelation of Jesus Christ. And yet, Pilate stood in front of him and did the same thing. He said, what is truth? And walked away, never waited for the answer. When you find truth embodied, it is greater than merely a proposition. Truth is primarily the property of propositions. And all truth converged in the incarnation and in the person of Jesus Christ so that he is the truth, and everything he said was the truth. And he said, they that are on the side of truth, listen to me. In not listening to him, this generation has concluded there is no such thing as truth. Yeah, that's where it's going. Boom. Yeah. Breakthrough me.